everybody. Good morning from Cisco Live San Diego. It is day three. It is the customer appreciation event tonight. You just heard a replay of Susie Wee's innovation talk on DevNet. And to my left, right over here, we have Mr. Steve Malter. Hello, my friend. Yeah, you know, it is the 30th anniversary of Cisco Live. Happy 30th birthday. Steve, were you even alive 30 years ago? You sweet thing, and you you may be complimenting <laughs> me, but all you're doing is really pointing up all of my, my numerous flaws, all of which are beautifully on display here today. Uh, 30th and then some, let's just put it that way. I could have a, I could have a 30 year old child without any <laughs> problem at all. Let, let's just say that half of our broadcast team could be my child at this particular moment. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, well, well, uh, maybe not, no. Forget, forget, forget I said that. I think we should talk DevNet a little bit, shall we? Let's talk about DevNet. Uh, so Susie Wee's talk was a bold new network for infrastructure developers and application developers. Essentially, an opportunity to bring software developers with network infrastructure engineers, what has DevNet's mission has been all along, and we've grown to basically a movement at this point. 600,000 developers, uh, that, is, that is nothing to snark at right I'm there. I'm telling you, this vision that Susie had, Susie Wee, who is, I mean, I always, you know, she's amazing. An incredible human being, but also a great visionary and somebody who put together this great idea of how do we get to all of those developers out there and not just connect them to Cisco, but help them accelerate their own careers at the same time, because what she did is she built an army of people to help her build this vision that she had for the organization, and uh, now here we are with all of these network developers working together. Rob was upstairs in DevNet uh, first thing this morning during our initial broadcast talking about all of the availability that's going on up in the sales pavilion upstairs here, and then Susie rolled directly into her talk, and it is maybe the single most dynamic and visited section of Cisco go live, and I got to give all that credit right back to Susie. Well, I know that Rob had a chance to talk with Eric Thiel earlier in the week. Let's take a look at that. All right, guys, we're here in DevNet talking about automating your infrastructure. We've got Eric, we've got Kevin. You guys have a couple of things to walk people through how this can be done. You've made it a lot more simple than even I thought was possible. I wonder if you could start us off. Let me know, what is it someone could expect to get out of coming to this booth here? Absolutely, so we've set up a series of booths actually here where we can demonstrate to customers that are not quite sure where, they're, where to get started, right. where we can show them you know, in their journey. First they might start with wanting to simulate their network, then they want to actually test pushing configurations out to their network, okay. uh, maybe using that simulation so they're not testing on production. Then they can actually go into a maintenance where they can actually maintain their network, take uh, corrective actions, and then follow, finally do some telemetry and analysis on that data. So we've shown all four of those in this journey. We want people to kind of follow through and see the total life cycle. And I love this. Okay, so and these are actually all things you can do on your own. You don't actually have to get it from you guys. Exactly. Uh, these stuff's freely available. Is there anything else there before I ask Eric? No, I ask, uh, Kevin, absolutely. Get Kevin, into it? Kevin can actually show you a little so bit. So Kevin, of you're going to show us there. exactly kind of what he's talking about. Yeah, I think the thing that we wanted to do is, you know, there's a lot of these demos that you can see in various booths, but the attendees are kind of scattered around the booths, they're and they're trying to figure out how all of this fits together. Right. So we try to create a storyline that says, if you've got a network, and in this case we've got a, a VXLAN EVPN fabric that is sort of our network that we're managing with all of the tools and paradigms that we're talking about. So as Eric mentioned, we're going to start with the Viral2 platform where we're simulating this environment, and I can do things like drill into it and actually look at the console of these devices and see what's happening on it as I'm going through and making configuration changes that go along. Then we want to move into, now that we have a test environment that we can mimic the, our production environment, we want to use that as the first stage to test out that our configuration changes are going to actually work uh, before, actual before we break them into, in, in, put into prod and okay. potentially create like an outage, right? All right, all right? So you can see here we're doing infrastructure as code using an open source GitLab uh, instance where we can push to our test branch that's provided by Cisco Viral 2 and push it onto those practice nodes first. Okay. Right? After we've gone through the deployment of it, in the deployment phase, we're actually using Cisco NSO and Ansible uh, to, to push the configuration changes back out to the device. Okay. Once we've pushed them into our test environment then, we're going to monitor that, that everything is still running. Okay. Here I'm using an open source tool called Console, which is a service mesh and service monitoring technology, which then tells me, did any of my nodes go down in the test environment? Right, right. Right? That okay. would obviously be bad, and we wouldn't want to so push check, that check into- So check marks are good, yeah? Check, green check marks are good, yep. Excellent. Red okay. is bad, generally speaking. 
Uh, but we also want to get a little bit more specific about just green, you know, obviously green's good, red's bad, but more specifically, what happens to the CPU utilization of these nodes as okay. we push configuration change to it. So I'm monitoring CPU and memory on all of the test nodes, as well as all of my production nodes, and I can, ch and I can find and identify any anomalies that get created after I push that configuration change. Okay to the devices. And then finally, after this, I can also go and get very, very specific through a scripted library called PyATS and Genie, which is on display here in the booth, wow. where I can actually go out and look and verify that all of my BGP neighbors are still established. And this is an automation which is going in and logging into all of these devices and verifying that I have established BGP neighbors on them. Yeah. Right? And the thing that we're most excited about with these demos that we're running here is that we've made all of the code as well as infrastructure via DevNet Sandbox available so that the attendees can go home and check this out on their own spare yeah. time. No, I love that. So developer.cisco.com for everything that you guys have covered. I love what you guys have done with the sandbox. You continue to add a lot more sandboxes, uh, and it's a great place. It's a resource that we can all go to to get our feet wet. We can get in there and learn. We're not going to break anything. We get access to a lot of tools, and you guys are providing a lot of good examples on a continual basis. A lot of them are downloadable and real easy to take advantage of. Guys, thank you so much, Eric, Kevin. Appreciate it so much. Check it out, developer.cisco.com, or even better, come visit these guys right here on the floor. Hey everybody, that was a great video that we just saw of Rob talking to Eric. Joining me in studio right now, we've got Mandy Whaley, Director of Software Development with DevNet, and Joe Clark, Hi. our Distinguished Engineer. Mandy, we had just heard some really cool announcements. I'm not going to steal your thunder. What are we showcasing with DevNet specifically around certification? Yes, we are very excited this week to be announcing the DevNet certification options as part of the overall certification suite that Cisco offers. So in addition to the network engineering certifications that we all know and love, like CCIE and CCNA, there's a new set of DevNet certifications, the DevNet Associate, the DevNet Professional, and DevNet Specialist as well. And the idea is that we're trying to create options for people to learn a mix of skills on both the infrastructure and the software side, which we think is really important for the way IT teams are going to be in the future. Joe, I saw your badge earlier. You guys can't see this because when we go in the studio we have to remove our badges, but this guy has plenty of certifications, <laughs> including a CCIE ribbon on the long, a long list of other ribbons as well. What does the DevNet certification track mean for other folks that have existing certifications? Well, Mandy uh, kind of hinted at it. We're software skills. Susie said it all week. Chuck said it on Monday. The software skills, programmability and automation, it's not just about software developers, it's about baking that into the network engineer as well. And what we've done in, in the network network engineer certifications is relaunch this program with streamlined certifications, more agility, more modularity, and we're folding the software skills into that as well. You asked specifically about the CCIE. The CCIE, in order to pass that, you are going to have to be familiar with wow. some automation concepts. You are going to have to be familiar with some programmability concepts. You can't do networking these days and be effective, do it at scale, do it with reliability without having some of those skills. So when are these DevNet tracks going to be available? So all of the uh, newly announced certification exams will start being available in February of 2020. So okay. between now and then, people can start learning yep. new skills, start looking for the training that will be coming out, and then the exams are available in February. Yes. So where can people learn more about this, Joe? I'll ask you. Sure, uh, go to cisco.com slash next level. Next level is one word, no dash. cisco.com slash next level. That's the landing page for all of the new certifications, including the DevNet certifications. You'll be able to see all of the exam topics for the new CCNA, the CCMP, the CCIE, the DevNet Associate, the DevNet Professional, all of our concentrations, and you'll be able to see the training as it rolls out, which is going to start this month, in fact. Great, thank you so much, Joe Clark and Mandy Whaley. Our we thank are going to go to a video where Rob talks more about the programmability side. If you go to developer.cisco.com, which is another resource, take a look at this video. 
Well, hey guys, we're here in the DevNet area where I always come to to get ideas. And my good friend Adrian, you've been on TechWise TV a number of times, yeah. always coming to me with saying, hey, look what we can do with APIs, Rob. And you promised me a few more today, so what have we got today? Yeah, Rob, thanks a bunch for coming over. So we have a couple of demos that I want to show you. Okay. So first of all, the uh, Wi-Fi augmented reality app that we've developed on top of DNA Center. Okay. So this is just to showcase people what they can actually accomplish uh, by using APIs, like we were saying. Yeah, so these are already here. available because uh, DNA Center is a very open platform. It is. Okay. So what we've done here, we've developed a mobile application to interact with your wireless infrastructure. Okay. So in this case, I have a client, it's connected to the wireless network, and I can do scan access points to discover what access points are around me based on my location right okay. here. All right. So I have, I have uh, six access points right now, and let's say I want to get a bit more information. I already have uh, strand level, signal strand level over here, distance, how Basics. far. Basics, what else yes. can you do though? But I can do a bit more. In this part, I can actually get into the augmented reality part of the app. Oh yeah, yeah, what's that part? In which I lock in my access point, right? You saw it got detected. Yeah, that's crazy, because I don't even see the stickers on that. That's a virtual version of it in our reality. Exactly, so it detected the model, it detected the access point, and now I can actually start getting static data, uh, the name of the access point, IP address, the IP of the wireless end controller, software version, this is all static data. Yeah, right? so you're a wireless yeah. operator, you're walking around, you're pointing your phone, at your access point using this app and it's identifying and giving you what you need to know on that specific one. That's pretty cool. More than that, so this okay. is only static data. I also have dynamic data, right? Oh, okay. So I get the uptime for this access point, uh, if the antennas are enabled or not. Okay. I can actually increase and decrease the power level on oh, this. So, so you're interacting all, as well, exactly. not just reading it. Okay. Right, so it's, not, it's also writing data back okay. to, to the devices. And the third thing that I wanted to show you here is the actual uh -huh. signal and the actual wireless spectrum from this access point in physical life, in physical reality, based on uh, based on. So the, pan around a little bit. You're doing. So this is. So green is good. This is literally the signal and how far the signal reaches out as seen through your iPhone camera. Exactly. This is what we can't visualize because we can't see the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, those waves anyway. Um, Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> that is exact, that that's, kind of, in this, and not to just oversell it, but this is the point of, it's the same API data that's already there. You're just taking it, crunching it in a different way. You guys have done this as an example of what customers and partners and, and such are already doing with this kind of data. We've made it available. Right, exactly, yeah. Oh my God. So it's all out there. Okay. And the last thing I wanted to show you here on this demo is the client view. As a client, oh. So you're getting client, I'm not just AP data. Not only, okay. right? So I get infrastructure, AP, but I also get client data. So that's through the assurance APIs that right. the NS Center exposes. I get here the scores for this specific client. I get a history of how uh, the, the RSSI level has been one hour right. ago, two or three hours ago. Okay. I can go back in time. It's very nice. And see a history of all these statistics for a specific client. I'm worried we're going to run out of time. Put the phone down. I want you to show me what you've got over here because you have props, which I always find interesting here. So, so explain what this box is. It looks like one of our IoT routers, but it's not. It's not. This is actually a GPU. So oh, okay. what we've done with this is for the first time ever in Cisco, we've taken a different approach with developing hardware. So okay. we've developed this with a developer mindset. So what a developer would need to actually accomplish their tasks. In so you're saying the case, developer needs were considered before the hardware was created. The hardware was created based on what developers said this is what they want to get done. Exactly. You guys had like a hackathon and stuff. We did. Stuff, right? So yeah. at DevNet Create. You guys are always brought, doing that stuff. Yeah. At DevNet Create, we brought four of our partners, four of our partners. Right. Um, and we gave them this okay. box, and then they came up with use cases, suggestions on how this can be actually improved and made as a product in the end. So at this point, it's a prototype. Right, okay. But we're looking at uh, productizing this. But you created this prototype as a g way to add a GPU onto an existing IoT router? Exactly, so okay. we developed this with the IR1101 okay. IoT router that we this have in mind. That's what these are? Okay. It's the one right here on the bottom. On the bottom, okay. Yep, that's the one we launched in Barcelona at Cisco Lab this year. Okay. So they're super modular. You already have 4G SIM cards that you can add on top of them. You have switch ports. And now, through this PCI interface, 
you can add a GPU and bring all the use cases that the GPUs are capable of huh. on uh, an infrastructure that you already have in place. So still your API story, but now it's a hardware mentality that's driven by developer needs. Now, can you explain why I'm wearing the helmet and the vest? What's the point of this? Yeah, so the use case that we've done here is, is we want to do a this camera here? OSHA compliance here. So it's a video feed that gets processed at the edge. Okay. And we do image recognition, and we can detect that you are indeed wearing a hard hat and that you have a safety vest on you oh. for manufacturing right, floors. Right, compliance issues compliance. and stuff like this. You can't lock them out to Are they at least following the instructions? We can do that with this type of information here. Adrian, exactly. thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Rob. Come over here to the developer side when you want to just get sparked with ideas. They've got a lot of them over here. It's amazing the amount of things you can do with the APIs, whether it's hardware-based or simply software-based. And if you're not here, it's developer.cisco.com. Get involved, this place is growing. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks guys. I think I want that hard hat and vest for when I'm on in studio. Well, joining me in studio right now, we have Mohammed Imam and Hank Preston. Mohammed is a director, uh, he's a TME &E director here at Cisco, and then we've got Hank Preston. His title here is just a software engineer. I just want you guys to know that he is so much more than a software engineer. The guy is an evangelist, he's known to the open community here. There's a ton of meetups, I'm sure there's a bunch of people tweeting right now. Oh my God, Hank Preston is on stage. I'm fangirling right now. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to go to Mohammed first. What is happening? around app hosting with the Cat 9K. Can you tell us really quick? Absolutely. App hosting has been there on Cat 9K, but we have completely relaunched app hosting on the Catalyst 9K using the native Dockers at the moment, and starting 1612. And what that really means is we are giving our customers an environment where they can host applications. That really goes back to the foundations of the Catalyst 9K. When we started developing the Catalyst 9K, we took a decision to have x86 based CPU on every Cat 9K, 9300 and above. And that means that we can host applications off the shelf that the developers around the world are developing. And now with the Docker engine inside the Cat 9K, that means you can just put the dockerized application on the Cat 9K and take advantage of it. That sounds incredible. Hank, what does that mean for developers? Well, it really opens up a whole new opportunity for developers. As Mohammed mentioned, we've had application hosting capabilities on the Catalyst platforms and some of the other ones for a while, but it's often required developers to do things custom to write those applications to run on our platforms. By now building the, the system and the platform inside of the Catalyst 9K to work into the development ecosystem developers are already using, there's less uplift, less change that they have to do, and it's much easier for them to take their applications and deploy them at the edge with uh, near immediate capabilities. So you were talking about before for app hosting that the applications had the application developers had to do something custom traditionally. What did we have to do traditionally in the Catalyst side before we got to the 9K with that platform that we were doing? before for apps, what did we have to do? Yeah, we had the containers uh, capability in there, but what we did not have is an orchestration tool and Docker capability. And the orchestration tool is our favorite Cisco DNA center, and that's what gives us the capability to, to manage the entire life cycle of the application. So if you have thousands of Catalyst 9K in your environment, with a few clicks, you can just go and deploy the application of your choice on the Catalyst 9K, and once you have deployed that, you have an option to integrate that application with a segment of the network. So you can actually tie that application with a VLAN, for example. Which means now you can utilize the data coming in your network at the very edge of the network, the starting edge of your network, and get multiple use cases, things like security use cases, IoT use cases, troubleshooting and monitoring use cases. There are a ton of applications out there and now the users can go and host those applications and it's up to their imagination, really, what they want to do with the Catalyst 9K using app hosting. 
So I want to do all of these things, absolutely. It sounds like, you know, not just for security, not just for performance management, there's an entire host and there's an entire community. Hank, why don't you tell me where I can learn more? Yeah, obviously the best place to go is DevNet, developer.cisco.com, but you can learn all about the new app hosting capabilities from open source applications to off the shelf applications by going to developer.cisco.com slash app dash hosting. You'll get learning labs and sandboxes where developers and network engineers alike can start right now. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Hank, Preston, and Mohammed and Mom. Thank you for joining us in studio today. Earlier this week, Rob had a chance to catch up with Casey Tong, talking a little bit about design thinking. Take a look. Hey guys, I'm here in the DevNet zone where I finally have stopped by an area that I'm kind of guilty of skipping over a few times, and it's design thinking. Casey, I'm so glad I got a chance to meet you. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd done this earlier. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Rob. This is really good stuff. So mm -hmm. let's just start with the basics. So sure. what is design thinking and why is it part of DevNet? Sure. So design thinking is actually a framework. Okay. It's actually a way to solve problems. So it's nothing technical. I know we talk about a lot of technical things right, right, in right. DevNet, especially in a DevNet zone. But this is a talking about like how do we use the resources that DevNet provides in a smart way. Okay. So for instance, like DevNet provides all these documentations, sandbox, APIs, learning labs, right? right. So we upscale our developer, they're good, they can get trained, right? right? But how after you get all this knowledge, how do you bring this back to work and solve problem in a smart way? Right? Okay. So design thinking is something to guide people through, hey, we don't build the solution just because my boss told you to do it or right. your boss told you to do it. We will build it because you're really solving for a problem. So design thinking actually break down into three phases and you actually go to look into the customer's problem okay. to build empathy with them, you discover what okay. is out there and then you start defining the problem and end up after you narrow down, you know that this is a problem that you are going to solve for, you start ideating, you start exploring okay. all the opportunities. So that's what design thinking is about. Now you guys have been walking groups through uh, throughout the entire week of uh, different teams within Cisco as well as the customer side are going, going through the methodology. Because mm -hmm. you guys have been doing this for a while. You didn't invent it, I think you told me earlier. Yes. But you're kind of uh, really helping us apply it to these particular set of problems that we traditionally are looking at here. Uh, I wonder if you could just walk me briefly through a little bit on the board back here. These are a lot of other people's yep. things they've been going through here. So not those specific examples, but uh -huh. is this the structure here? Yes, correct. So today, like what we're doing in the DevNet zone, so we're having some of these um, design thinking activities that map into the different phases to show, okay. to get people a taste of what it's like practicing design thinking. So you're no longer just sitting there and coding, but right. you're having like this very interactive session. You get to post it and then you put ideas on the board. Okay. So this one, what you're looking at is actually the empathy map that maps to the first stage of design thinking. Yeah. Okay. So what we're particularly talking about today is about the new network. Now we're in a programmable age. We're building so much new things. We're upskilling ourselves. But what are the real things that we want to solve for? Like, what are the skills that we should prioritize and learn? Because yeah. there's so many things that you can learn, right? Absolutely. And then people are going to be so afraid because they have to catch up. Right. So this is why we're here today to capture this insight from the developer and the engineer. Oh, and that's awesome. what you see in here. We're asking a couple of questions. So it's broken down into different quadrants. So this is about what are the things that you're automating right now? Right. What are the things that you're doing? Okay, already doing. Yeah, already okay. doing, or okay. you want to do. Okay. And then this is the thing about like what are the things that you see or you hear? So right. these are the facts that are going conditions on. Environmental conditions and okay. Exactly, things that are happening out there. Okay. How do you feel? What are the things that you're thinking, right? Like how would you prepare yourself when okay. we talk about the new IT, the future IT new network? Okay. How do you prepare yourself? And what are the skills that you want to learn? How do you wow. grow? Okay. So these are the things that we start to build this empathy with the network engineer and developer. So from the DevNet side, we can understand more about what you guys need. And then from you huh. guys' perspective, you get to know, oh, maybe to think a little bit more. Maybe these are the things that I do with every day, but I don't really break it down into these frameworks to think yeah. about it clearly. No, I just don't spend enough time on this kind of stuff because yes. often I just, I'm guilty of this, I just don't feel like I've got a structure mm -hmm. or a way to go about doing it. I may exactly. have picked off a few pieces, but then I'm always anxious to just go start solving the mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. yeah, and when you're solving a problem, you usually work with a bunch of stakeholders, right? Oh, so yeah. this is something to- I need to, way to get their input. Exactly, yeah. you okay. don't want to sit in a meeting and just listen to yeah. your boss because your boss tells you to do X, Y, Z, and then you do it, and then at the end of the day, you figure out this is not something really helping to solve right. the problem. Yeah. That's not helping you to be like a successful engineer and bring value to the company, right? Now I'm really feeling bad. Okay, yes. no, but I understand <laughs> what you mean. No, this is good. Yes. And just to make the point, you guys obviously have a way of converting all of this into actionable items. Correct. It's not a matter of just getting in 
touch with certain things, yes. it's actually taking action on it. Mm -hmm. And to make that point for anybody that can't actually be here, so one I love because they committed to paper here. It's on sale yes. at the Cisco Bookstore uh, as well, but you can get this. Design thinking is where you want to go at developer.cisco.com. You can get the book, also more information on the web. Uh, this Correct. is stuff we do internally. We encourage customers and partners to be doing this as well because mm -hmm. it's life skills, you were telling me. Yes, yeah. we're actually working with um, the different uh, UX team across the different BU. So throughout this week, we'll have the collaboration UX team and also the enterprise nice. networking UX team. They will be here. So yeah. if you guys have any like product feedback, come talk to us. We're willing, so willing to listen to you. I've got a list. We'll get yes. back in touch. Guys, come check it out. Thank you. I love that we have an entire area devoted to DevNet, and in that DevNet area, there's even an area for design thinking that doesn't just apply to software development, but actually in every part of your job, you can actually apply the capability, and we talk about upskilling with that design thinking piece. Okay, in just a few more minutes, the Innovation Showcase continues. We're going to shift gears just a little bit. One of the things we heard Mohammed talk about earlier is that we have this programmability layer that we now can layer onto the Cat 9Ks. We're going to hear a little bit more about that coming up next in reinventing access in a multi-domain world. We're going to look at how we can do dynamic segmentation at the campus all the way through into other parts of the domain. Here we go. Thank you.